go to the file menu in Illustrator and place. Select a file, and I'm just going to go with a PNG file, it could be JPEG, TIFF, etc., and place. Go into a bed, and then simply just drag over here into the swatches panel. That's all you need to do, just drag it in, and it's quickly saved there. You can just drag, make sure it's drawing. Now sometimes you can actually drag into the wrong place and you're looking for it. That's, it's now there. Well, what you can also do is you can crop it as well. Go up here and you've got crop image along the control bar. So crop image, you might decide, you know what? That's a nicer part of the image. Just that selection there. Happy with that. Click apply and then just drag that over into the swatches panel as well. Now I'm just gonna drag that up there. Now another option, also actually pretty useful before I go any further, is to go to object menu and down here to pattern and make. Now that's a recent feature, well, five, six years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, who knows, that you can use here. So make, and then you see this pattern. Unfortunately within this, lots and lots of panels pop up all the time. I'm not certain why they had to make it so, uh, what's the name of those panels? However, you might have a default set to move tile with art. You might like to set that off. Personally, I like to have that off. And you can see the bounding box. Now, here's the bounding box, here's the red. So if I move the image, you can see that blue is the bounding box. That is what's gonna be defined as the pattern. That's the pattern, not the red bounding box there. That's the actual object you're resizing. So if I resize that, you can see, obviously that blue bounding box even clearer now. And I can make another copy of that. Hold down the Alt or Option key. Hold down the Alt Option key and duplicate. And again, at the top here, you can always say save a copy. So save a copy, click OK, and it will come up again with more panels. You can always click the don't show again. It doesn't matter because they will come back. They always seem to. Whenever I, I've got every version of Illustrator, they always reappear. Never ever get rid of pop-ups like that. It's one frustrating feature of Illustrator. I don't need them, but I guess they may be useful, but after a 50th time, you get to think, well, maybe not. However, got that, and you get a save copy. And once you have, you've done, you've finished, and then they've all been saved nicely to the swatches panel, and then you can use them. Now, just move that. Now you can, of course, apply other effects. You maybe decide, you know what, actually, before I do that, you can go to effect, maybe go for a blur, Gaussian blur. And you can save that as well to the swatches. A load of other things you can do with that image. So I'm just, I'm not gonna need it anymore. However, let's just apply it. Let's just go over here and a rectangle tool. You can use the shapes like ellipses, stars, any sort of shape. But I'm just gonna apply it like this. Now, you can go up here, you've got the fill and you've got the stroke. You can use there, or you can make just certain you've got the fill set there or the stroke, etc and then you can apply it here. And you can, as soon as you see that, it's applied, you can see it's applied very quickly to this. Now, obviously I've got a lot of ones. Now this one's got the blur in effect. Now, in Illustrator, if something happens like that and you think, oh no, how do I get rid of it? How do I move something? Always the best solution is always to go to Window and Appearance. Window and Appearance, and just go down here, Clear Appearance because then it removes everything, freshes everything up without having to think, oh, you know what, I better delete this, delete that, delete that. You can then just apply it again and you can see now what I wanted, which was that image there. You can also, of course you might turn around and say, you know what, oh, I made a mistake. I've made a mistake in this. Now you might have made a mistake in the original pattern, so you can turn around, let's just move that out of the way a bit. You can deselect it. I don't want to work on that. I want to work on, say, this, this design. So um, that's the one I'm using. I might just make certain that's the current pattern. I can double click on that. And again, when you double click on it, you can then edit it again. You think, oh, you know what, I want that bit smaller. Actually, what I wanted was it to be rotated, just slightly angled. And I've, I've done now. And you can see now the result there. So you can just change things. If you want to, you can always still continue to tweak them modify them, update them, etc. Also, you might turn around and say, well, actually, the, the sizing's wrong. I'm not happy with the sizing. Well, I can go to Object Menu and Transform. And I can go here to Scale. You can use other ones as well, but Scale. 
and you can see what happens unfortunately the default which is always slightly frustrating when you've been working with patterns for the last half an hour it still somehow mysteriously always goes back to transform objects even though i'm intending just to transform pattern so you can just deselect that transform patterns that's what you want to be set on and you click OK, and that's done at 20%. You can decide, you know what, I want it 40. And you can see the effect at 40, or 200. So you can see it at 200, or 400. So you can just vary it, obviously, just about. You don't want to push it too far. But you can click OK. Well, what you can do, you can also apply it to other shapes as well. So let's just go for another one. Let's just go for a circle. So ellipse tool. And you can see the design there. And again, you might decide, you know what, I don't want that. So object, transform, and scale. Maybe that's too big. Now, then it, of course, does it again. Transform objects, set back on again. Always, I love the fact that it always comes back. Deselect it again. Transform pattern. I don't want it at 400. I want it at 50. So you can just change it. 25, etc. Click OK. So you can change it. <clears throat> now, I'm using it with a, a fill. You can also use it with strokes. And you might like to actually just chain, make the whole thing go black because I'm just going to, for the fill. Because it's slightly distracting when you have both. You end up sort of thinking, oh, is that the image that I'm working with, etc. But you can again select it from here. And you can go up, oh, let's go down and make it 80. So you can see it there now around the edge. That's why I went for black, just so I can re you can clearly see it. It just gets a bit sort of odd when you've got both. Now... You can also, of course, modify here. You've got uniform. You can change the width profiles. You can also use various brushes here within limits. There's some, you just can't go and select this brush. It will not work. I don't think. Please put a comment below if you've got it working with that. It never seems to work for me. But you can just add all kinds of strokes and you can change the stroke. So as long as you're doing it from here and also if make certain you're actually using the stroke. And you can see then you just run in through that. Quite often I change it and I suddenly change the wrong thing. So you can see you can run through them and just create a variety of different strokes. However, what you can also do is you can go to your appearance panel and you can find that in window menu, appearance. Again, super useful for clear appearance. Always useful for clearing all problems. You can add another stroke. So add new stroke. So add a new stroke. What it does, does on the tin, it adds a new stroke. So you've got the original stroke that might be 10 points, 80 points, whatever. But now you've got an additional one. You can also duplicate item as well, which is probably sometimes even more useful. But the one that's on top, there it is. Maybe you decide, you know what, I want it to be 100. Well, you can go and change it. So let's just go and change it. So now I've selected a red one. This is one I did earlier, but a red design. So you can see it's gone on top of the existing one there. Well, what you can do, you can always drag. So you can just drag that one up above and you can see now you've got that one with the width profile, etc. And that image and you've got the one below as well. So you can create a variety of different designs, combinations of images as swatches as well, just by using the appearance panel. Now, also what you can do, you've got brushes. So you've got brushes, you can apply a brush stroke and you can see the brush stroke. Now, the brush stroke is unfortunately a very basic brush stroke and you can set it up with multiple appearances, multiple strokes, etc. But it always seems to just always apply it with one. I'm not certain why, but that's what it does. And again, you can select different swatches there and you can change the size. Let's just go for, I don't want that, I want maybe 100. So you can just see it, oh, maybe not that big. 20 point, whatever. So you can see, you can change that and you can change that, run through that and create all kinds of different brushes Go to the tools panel and select the type tool. With the type tool, just type something. Not lorem ipsum, I'm gonna go with type. So I'm just gonna drag that out, make it a bit bigger than that, so you can actually see it. Well, black there, but you can always select the fill, so you can just go down there and you can make it any of these pattern swatches, and you can see you've got your design there. If again, exactly the same as before, if you decide, you know what, that is just a bit too big, you can always go to object menu, now it sets, lets me select it. Yes, it does. Don't know why sometimes when you go to it, it's disabled. Very weird. However, you can go to scale and you can see what happens. It, of course, scales the type. Again, it's put that 
on again. I don't want that. I want a transform pattern. And I can make that maybe 10. And you can see as you do that, it scales it down. Or maybe make it 60 and so on. So you can change it, tweak it just by using the scale as well as rotate, etc. You can also add a stroke as well. So because I don't want to confuse myself with having something very similar to this, I'm going to go for one of these red strokes and these were created earlier. So let's just go up here and you can just select here or go down here, make certain you've got the stroke selected and then you can select here. So you just select that and it's got a stroke edge. Obviously it's one point by default, always is. You can change it. Let's just go for 16. So you can now see it. And again, I can select a different one. Let's just go for a red one. So you've got that. So you can create a variety of different designs with those images as strokes, as well as fills. But you can also go to appearance panel. With this, you can go here and you can turn around and say, add a new fill or add a new stroke. That's the right side menu. So add new stroke, got a new stroke. Now in this case, the type is slightly different because the way it's done, it's got appearance. You can notice it's got this characters, opacity, etc. Doesn't display it in the normal conventional way it's with normal path. But I've got this stroke and I'm gonna turn around and say, I'm gonna put it to 40. And you can see it massively goes over on top. Thing. However, what you can do exactly same, you can always just drag down and reposition it. So you've got it behind those characters and you can see now you've got that. But you can do exactly the same as before. You've got black there. That's the one that I'm gonna be using stroke. So I can just turn around and say, I want blue, that one of those Im blue images, or maybe one of the blurred images and so on. So I've got your type there. Create a variety of different type using that. Also, once you've done that, you of course, it's still live type. So you might decide, you know what? I don't want the word type. I could turn around and add some, something else. So a load of other words can be, and they will all have exactly the same. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.